terrifying, mysterious places hidden in the sky. Many ancient sites with secrets have been found worldwide. Every one of them is shrouded in exquisite mysteries as to how, when and why they were built. As we try to learn more about our distant past, these ancient places have the potential to reshape our understanding of prehistory. Here are some of the most puzzling and fascinating sites from across the globe. But before we begin, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's dig in. Coming up at number 4 on our list is the Katsuki Pilar. Emerging from Georgia's forested Emirati region stands the enigmatic Katsuki Pilar, a massive limestone monolith with a mysterious past. This pillar, seen as a symbol of the true cross, now serves as an official Georgian Orthodox church. Although it was mentioned in 18th century Georgian writings, the pillar didn't capture Western attention until the 1940s. Mountaineer Alexander Japarites and rider Levin Gotua made the first documented ascent during this time. Reaching the pillar requires a significant hike, and in its early days only the bravest monks dared to climb its sheer face to reach the structure on the top, aiming to be closer to God. Rising about 131 feet tall, the pillar provides incredible views of the nearby landscapes and holds a ruined church spanning around 500 square feet. Recent research suggests the remains date back to the 9th or 10th century and feature inscriptions from the 13th century. The church area includes multiple rooms like a crypt, three lodging cells and a wine cellar. Excavation of the wine cellar uncovered several sizable drinking vessels called query. Early descriptions of the pillar and its church mentioned, there is a rock in a ravine resembling a tall pillar. A small church is on top, but no one can climb it and they don't know how. Although abandoned for many years, Religious activity was revived at the Katsuki Pillar in the 1990s. A government-funded restoration project has made the site safe and accessible. A Georgian Orthodox monk named Maxine Kaftaraz lived atop the pillar for over two decades, coming down only twice weekly and playing a significant role in the restoration work. However, after once welcoming male visitors who could use an iron ladder, the site is now closed to the public. It's accessible solely by monks from the nearby monastery who climb the rock for prayers. Even now, very little is known about the people who initially built the church on the Katsuki Pillar or the remarkable methods they used to achieve this astonishing construction. Number 3. Skellig Michael In the rough waters, about nine miles from the coast of County Kerry in Ireland, two rocky mountains stand out in the Atlantic Ocean. The bigger one is called Skellig Michael. It has an old monastery that is around 1,400 years old, but it's not easy to see. When you get closer to Skellig Michael, it seems like no one has ever lived there. However, if you look carefully, you can find paths that go up the very steep slopes to the top. On the top of Skellig Michael, there are some old stone buildings close together. People think monks lived there about 1,400 years ago and stayed for over 600 years. Even though the place is really high up, at 750 feet, the buildings are still in good condition even though the weather there is tough. There's also a traditional graveyard where the bodies of the people who live there are buried. Besides the main beehive-shaped buildings called cloaking, there are several terraces, two oratories and yet more graves, as well as a church with walls measuring two meters thick. The construction process of these structures must have been incredibly strenuous and it's possible that some of the graves scattered across the island might hold those who dedicated their lives to its construction. 
Archaeologists are confident that the monastery was utilized for several centuries, yet the reason for its eventual abandonment remains uncertain. Presently, only a few trips are allowed to the island, and a decision is made to preserve the ruins. Just 12 licensed tour guides are authorized, each permitted to lead a single journey to Skellig Michael annually. Number 2. Abuna Yematagu The taiga region in northern Ethiopia is sparsely populated and characterized by arid plains and striking pale sandstone mountains. Within these ancient rocks lie remnants of past civilizations. Among them is Abuna Yematagu, a monolithic Ethiopian Orthodox church carved into a sheer rock face during the 6th century to honor Abuna Yemata, one of the nine saints. What sets Abuna Yematagu apart is its location at an astounding 8,460 feet elevation, reachable only through a treacherous descent by foot, preferably barefoot. This lofty position is believed to bring worshippers close to heaven. To access the church entrance, pilgrims and the visitors must first ascend a steep and dangerous path using age-old hands and fold holes in the rock. Those who complete the climb then encounter a dizzying natural stone bridge with an 820-foot sheer drop on either side. A narrow and unstable wooden footbridge follows, adding to the challenge. But the trials aren't over. Determined visitors face another exhausting ascent, involving a climb up a vertical rock wall with no support or assistance available. Those who manage to reach this point are advised against looking down, as they traverse a narrow ledge along a cliff with a thousand-foot drop on one side, leading to certain death. Upon entering, visitors are initially surrounded by darkness. But as their eyes adjust, they can admire the inner beauty of Abuna Yematagu. Along with its architectural marvels, the church is adorned with paintings on its walls and dome ceilings. These frescoes are remarkably well preserved due to the dry environment and remote location, which has deterred looting for centuries. Believed to date back to the early days of Christianity, these paintings portray characters from the Old Testament and center around the Nine Saints, a group of missionaries who brought Christianity to Ethiopia in the late 5th century, thought to originate from Rome. These paintings are some of the earliest visual representations of biblical stories. The interior of the church comprises various chambers, including some containing human remains, bones of individuals brought up for cremation and rituals. The surrounding area also hosts other cliffside churches constructed in subsequent centuries. Many of these structures continue to be maintained and cared for by Ethiopian Orthodox monks. These monks once exchanged Bible readings for water with locals, allowing them to stay on the mountaintop close to heaven and some have remained there for decades without descending. And now to our number one. We have the lost sky city built by ancient gods called Sigiria. The city of Sigiria is an unrecognized ancient wonder of the world. And this is so because it's widely recognized among experts as one of the best preserved examples of urban regional planning. The ancient site indeed is a true wonder of the world reaching for the sky. Since this city is kind of recognized as the Eight Wonder, the Rock Fortress is one of the most valuable ancient historical monuments built in present-day Sri Lanka. 1,500 years ago, there lived an ancient Sinhalese king who decided he wants to construct an incredible modern fortress city on top of a huge rock. This rock is 200 meters, 660 feet high, with a width of 2.5 kilometers, 1.5 miles. 
This city was the geometrical center of the city built by King Kasyapa, who ruled around 477 to 495 AD. This city was indeed a breathtaking sight and was visible for miles around. It appeared to float above the treetops as though on a gleaming white cloud. The Sky Palace was the innermost sanctum of Cassiapa's fortress, and it's also where, according to the ancient chronicles, he lived like a god. The history of Sigiria matches its famed beauty. Scholars like Lal Srinivas and Mirando Apsikara argued that the sky city of Sigiria is most likely the Ala Kamandava, the city of the gods which was built more than 50 centuries ago by King Kubera. Some other scholars also argued that around the 3rd century BC, Sigiria served as a monastery. However, in the second year of the 5th century, a king by the name Kasyapa decided to construct a royal capital on its summit. King Kasyapa was also credited with revolutionizing the site even further. It's believed that he developed the city into the complex and fortress that it is now. King Cassiapa also constructed a wide range of structures on the summit and also around it. Some other structures like defensive structures, palaces, gardens and religious structures were added to the side during his reign. Sigiria means Lion Rock. It's a large rock with a lion carved into it and an ancient kingdom on top. It's located in the middle of Sri Lanka's cultural triangle. Visitors who come to see this mesmerizing site have to walk 1,200 steps, which are divided amongst several staircases, to the top of the rock, which is 200 meters high. The gardens in Sigiria are known to be the best preserved water gardens in South Asia and it's also considered to be among one of the oldest landscaped gardens in the world. History tells us that many important guests in the 5th century would most likely have walked a path with impressively designed water gardens on either side. This served as a grand entrance to the more than 1,200 steps that lead up to the palace. Will you ever risk visiting these places as a tourist? Do let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more amazing content. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.